Hello everyone, welcome back to Raw Online. I'm Dr. Maheshwaran K.S. I'm a lecturer at Department of Prosthodontics, Sri Ramchandra Faculty of Dental Sciences. Today we are going to be looking at a very important chapter which is Principles of Design in a Removable Partial Denture. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the factors influencing stress transmission. So the contents is basically going to include an introduction. We then go into what support and force distribution in a removable partial denture means. Then we have to know what is the mechanics of movement in an RPD. Okay, In that what a fulcrum line and an inclined plane is. How are the mechanics of movement taking place in an entirely tooth supported RPD and a tissue and tooth supported RPD. Then we go into the main topic for today which is going to be factors influencing stress transmission. There are a lot of factors which are going to influence the amount of stress that is being generated by the removable partial denture. Okay, So first we need to understand what these factors are and then we can design the removable partial denture to reduce these factors. Okay, So there we have length of potential span, you have the quality of ridge support, in clasp you have its flexibility, its design, its length and also the material that is used. We have surface characteristic of abutment, also occlusal harmony. So let's see what a removable partial denture is, simple we all know what it is. A removable denture that replaces some teeth in a partially edentulous arch. The removable partial denture can be easily inserted and removed from the mouth by the patient. So if all the teeth are missing in the patient's mouth, it is a completely edentulous situation. There, the removable denture that you are fabricating is called a complete denture. Okay. Now you have a partially edentulous situation, which means you have some teeth still present in that arch. You are only replacing the uh, missing teeth that are present. Okay. Hence, this will be called as a removable partial denture because it's a partially edentulous arch where you're replacing the missing teeth alone but you will have components of the removable partial denture that are going to be coming in contact with the remaining natural teeth because you need to get some support from these tooth hence your support for a removable partial denture comes from two things your natural teeth as well as the residual alveolar ridge whereas the support for a complete denture is completely your denture bearing area which is all your soft tissue there is no hard tissue at all okay this is the fundamental difference in the support for an rpd and a complete denture okay now if you take support and force distribution we know that the removal partial denture will definitely take support from the natural tooth okay so you need to first understand what the natural tooth is capable of doing the design has to consider the ability of natural tooth to resist forces because the minute you take support from natural tooth, whatever movement that is taking place in the RPD is going to be transmitted to the natural tooth. Okay, So the natural tooth in general have periodontal fibers and they are aligned to resist vertical or axial forces directed along their long axis. This is the long axis of the tooth. Okay, Most of the PDL fibers are oriented in such a way that your natural tooth can really withstand any compressive forces that are along the long axis of the tooth okay they are very capable of withstanding these but if there is any non-axial loading if there is any rotational forces or angulated forces your teeth cannot withstand that it has very poor resistance what will happen it will slowly start causing periodontitis which means it will result in bone loss and the tooth is going to be periodontally weak okay hence Non-axial forces even of small, small magnitude is going to be extremely destructive to the supporting structures. So you know now that the tooth can only withstand forces along the long axis. So if you take a long period of time, the tooth can comfortably withstand forces along the long axis. It cannot take up angulated or rotational type of forces. Okay. Now there is an inherent difference in the compressibility between the soft tissue and the hard tissue. The RPD is taking support from both, but they both do not have the same qualities. They, don't, they both do not have the same properties. Your natural tooth is, com is a hard tissue, whereas your denture bearing area has soft tissue. Underneath that, it has bone. Okay, This soft tissue is capable of being compressed by up to 2 millimeters approximately. Of course, this is going to differ from region to region, but the tooth can be compressed in its socket only by 30 microns. That is a huge difference. Okay, which means the removable partial denture that is the part of the removable partial denture that is sitting on your soft tissue can get compressed up to 2 mm. It can move up and down up to 2 millimeters, whereas the components of the removable partial denture that is in contact with the tooth cannot move up and down beyond 30 microns. 
So this disparity in compressibility between the tooth and tissue is going to present difficulties in the stability of the RPD which will basically lead to movements of the removable partial denture. So to understand what type of movements that are happening, you need to first know that any type of movement can be explained via three planes and three axes. Okay, we live in a three dimensional world. Anything can be explained via three planes and three axes. So these are all imaginary planes and axes that we are using to understand the movement of removal partial denture. Okay, these are all imaginary planes and axes that we use so that we can have an understanding of where these movements are taking place, how they are taking place. So you basically have three planes. You have sagittal, frontal, horizontal plane. The axis is always going to be at right angle to the plane. That is the basic rule that follows. Okay, it is at right angle. So the transverse or horizontal axis, if you take, the movement is going to be in a sagittal plane. It is going to be in a superior inferior rotational type of movement, basically similar to your car tire. Okay, if you take the frontal plane, then you have your movement will happen around the sagittal axis along the frontal plane. So it is like your table fan. Okay, it is going to basically swivel sideways. It's going to rotate sideways along the, sorry, around the sagittal axis. If you take the horizontal plane, right, you are going to have a vertical axis. The movement is taking place around the vertical axis along the horizontal plane. The classic example is our earth. It is rotating sideways around your orbit, right, which is basically a vertical axis. So any object can be explained. The movement of any object can be explained via these three planes and three axes. Okay. Now you need to first know what a fulcrum is and what a fulcrum line is in relation to removable partial tension. A fulcrum generally means pivot point around which a lever turns. So you have class 1 lever, class 2 lever, class 3 lever. This is an example of class 1 lever. This is the fulcrum. This is the pivot point. This black line is the lever. Okay. If the fulcrum is at the center of the lever, whatever force that you are applying on one side will get equally transmitted in the other side in an opposite direction. So this is a very efficient lever, most efficient lever because whatever forces you are applying on one side gets transmitted in the other side in the opposite direction. Why? Because the fulcrum is in the center. Now the term fulcrum line was given by Protero in 1916 in relation to removable partial denture. Okay? It is basically an imaginary line connecting occlusal rest around which a removable partial denture tends to rotate and the masticatory forces. If you take this framework, this is your occlusal rest. Okay? The determinants for the fulcrum line are usually the cross arch occlusal rest on most distally located abutments. This particular terminology is very important, most distally located abutment. So there may be more than two rests in a framework. Okay, Here you have a mesial and distal rest, mesial and distal rest. But the fulcrum line is an imaginary line that passes through the rests of the most distally located abutment. Okay, This is your distally located abutment. This is the distal most rest. So basically this is a horizontal fulcrum line that is passing through your rest. Okay, So around this fulcrum line, your movements of removal partial denture is going to take place. Okay. 